Hi everyone and welcome back to this channel. Today in this video, we are going to implement the camera functionality in Flutter. So on the right hand side, you can see how does the output looks like. Here I have an application which makes use of phone's camera and we have some buttons that controls the camera here. So without wasting any much time, let's quickly get into the video. So just before we actually begin, I'd like to share how I got the idea of creating this video. So recently I was at my friend's wedding and we decided to take a snap quick pic of a happy couple. But my phone's camera wasn't working and it kept freezing and crashing every time I tried to take a shot and I was getting more and more frustrated by the minute. But then I remembered that yeah, I'm a Flutter developer and I thought to myself, why not give it a try? So I created a Flutter application implementing the camera functionality inside it and it actually worked like a charm. And then I was able to take some amazing pictures of my friends and even became the unofficial wedding photographer for the day. So without any further ado, let's see how we can make our own camera application using Flutter. Alright, so the first thing you need to make sure is the dependencies installation. So here right into your perfect.yaml file, you need to have a camera dependency and you can always check the pub.dev site for the latest version. Back to our code, here I have written a template, so the first is a main method and then we'll be having a camera screen stateful widget next we'll be defining the ui we have written some functions like init state or dispose camera functionality and after capturing the picture from the camera we'll be displaying it on the preview screen so this is another stateless widget we have written now let's start writing some logic so here we'll be importing the required package that is camera.dart and please make sure that you wrap your camera in screen widget inside a material app now inside your state class, this is where we'll be writing all our logic part. So here I'll be defining two variables that is the controller for the camera and another one is initialize controller future. So let it be like this only. First let's understand what a controller is. So controller is basically used for configuring the basic properties of your camera and for the configuration part we always do it in the init state method. So here we'll be defining a controller, I mean configuring the controller. So already we have defined this camera controller as controller. So we'll be writing controller is equals to camera controller. Now it just asks me for two things that is the description and the resolution preset. So for the description, we'll be having a camera description like this. And this will contain in a few properties like lens direction, name and sensor orientation. So this is nothing but just the basic properties. You can always hover on and see what it is like clockwise angle through which the output image needs to be rotated to be upright on the device screen in its native orientation and name is the camera device name then next is the lens direction so after setting these properties we are left with the resolution preset so just set your resolution preset to medium and a semicolon here all right so we have configured our controller part and for dispose we'll be writing controller dot dispose method and this is done now is the time to build our UI. So inside our scaffold, we'll be writing a body property and here we'll be using a future builder because camera will be available as a future from the device. So here I'll be writing a future builder and inside this builder would be a anonymous function taking the parameters as context and snapshot. And let's put in some condition here. So if we got our connection as connection state dot done, then we'll just return the camera preview with the controller as a parameter inside it and if we are not getting the connection confirmation then we'll just return a circular progress indicator now there's one thing left we have already defined the future here initialize controller future and we'll use it inside our future builder so here i'll be writing a future future and this will be our initialize controller future this will be the builder i guess let me also give the type of this future builder so it will be of the type void. So along with this, let me also open up my screen mirroring application. I'm using visor here. Let me open this up. Now the only thing we are left is a button that will click the picture. So let's implement it quickly. So after our future builder, we'll be having a button. Let's say a floating action button. So this is a direct property of the scaffold. And now let's also add a on pressed method. So it should be on pressed. And 
here let's add a try catch block okay now the error on the screen says that late initialization error field initialize controller future has not been initialized okay so we'll just go to our uh, camera configuration here we also need to initialize this variable that is the initialize controller future so we'll just write here this initialize controller future is equal to controller dot initialize and if I restart this application yep we are getting the output so let's minimize this for now and now we have to write our click picture functionality so inside our try catch block we'll be writing a method for clicking the picture so we'll be writing controller dot take picture method and since we are using this await so we have to make this function as asynchronous and that's it so once we click the picture we need to redirect the user to the preview screen which we have defined uh, here as a stateless widget so we'll be using a navigator dot route functionality so i'll be adding this navigator dot push and we'll just uh, go to preview screen so as soon as the camera clicks the picture it will have a path associated with it so we are passing the image path as image dot path inside our preview screen widget all right so now let's test it out so we got our camera here and now let me click on this camera button okay flash was on all right so we got our preview like this and this is pretty much it so this is how we are going to implement our camera functionality now we can also add some more features like controlling this flashlight and other properties of the camera but for the sake of this video i want to show you how a basic application involving the camera functionality work we're looking at the advanced implementation in the later parts of the video so make sure that you subscribe to the channel and if you like this video please hit the like button and share with your friends thank you